Hello beautiful people, Astrology Guy here. The four weeks of Gemini season is upon us. So I wanted to make sure to give each and every one of you, no matter what your sign, the goods on what to expect from Gemini season when it comes to love and your life overall and a game plan so you can make sure that you're in sync with the universe and utilizing the energy of Gemini season to assist you in moving forward when it comes to manifesting the things that you desire and definitely deserve. This video will be most effective if you make sure to watch the quick overview portion before watching each of your individual signs. I recommend that you watch this from the perspective of your rising sign and your sun sign. Okay, no more wasting time. Here are the goods on Gemini season and the best way to make the most of the energetic openings it has to offer. Let's go. Okay, so Gemini season begins when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th at 3.37 p.m. and will stay in Gemini until the sun shifts into Cancer on June 20th. Now during Taurus season, the theme was consistency and staying the course in terms of continuing to nurture your short-term goals and making sure those goals supported your overall goals for 2021. Now Gemini season is immutable energy, so the theme here is adaptability. It's making sure you look at what you've been able to achieve so far since Aries season and then reassess the situation. Do you still want the same things? If so, how can you adapt to the current circumstances to make sure that you're doing everything in your power to get the results you desire? Gemini season is about making sure not to get stuck in one place due to frustration. It's about taking the time to make any necessary adjustments and adaptations so you continue on the path of fulfillment. Also make sure that you aren't going at it alone. The mutable energies are fantastic at networking because they understand the need for support and outside ideas. So make sure that during the four weeks of Gemini season that you not only adapt to the circumstances, but you also step outside of your comfort zone and connect and communicate as much as possible because this is for sure the time to enhance your team, meaning expanding and deepening the relationship with the people in your life that you know you can count on and that you know can be helpful in supporting you on your journey. Now, Mercury will be going retrograde during Gemini season as well on May 29th and staying retrograde until June 22nd, but I'll do a separate video addressing that in the near future. Now, now, that being said, let's get into each individual sign and get more specific regarding love and your overall life and the best way to use the energy of Gemini season to your advantage. Okay, Aries. Now, when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th, this will take place in your third house. So Aries, this four week period of Gemini season is all about communication. This is a time where you will be busier than usual and where the energy of this time period will be supporting connection and networking. Whatever goals you have for yourself right now, Aries, can always be nurtured by a support system. And this Gemini season is a time to build that team of people that you trust will help you on your journey. Your mind will be more active than usual and your power to pick up information and quickly sift through the details in order to utilize the most important points of this information, that ability will be in high gear. Make sure you really take your time when it comes to scheduling because it will be easy to get yourself in a situation where you're over scheduling yourself and you don't want to deplete your energy and find yourself in action a lot but not getting so much done. So when it comes to practicality and the everyday influence of Gemini season, the focus for you will be making the most of the connections that you've made and that you can make during this time. Now when it comes to love, Venus will enter Cancer on June 2nd, which will be in your fourth house Aries. This means that if you're single, you'll for sure have a boost in your desire to be in a relationship. You will be much more attracted to someone that comes off as protective and loyal. If you meet a potential romantic connection, it will most likely be in some environment that relates to home. The person may be an interior designer, an architect, a caregiver, a family counselor. It's also possible that the romantic connection you make could come from someone that a family member has introduced to you. If you're already in a relationship, this is actually a good four week period for you and your partner, but you may find the urge to upgrade your living space, meaning just redecorating or even talking about potentially moving. If you two don't live together, this could be the time period where you start to discuss the idea of taking that leap to the next phase of the relationship. So overall, when it comes to love, Aries, this is a good time for you to deepen your connection if you're already in a relationship. And if you're single, it's a great time for you to make a connection with someone in those ways that I mentioned earlier. Now, when the new moon solar eclipse comes around on June 10th, this will also be in your third house. Now, just remember, a solar
solar eclipse brings to light consequences of past actions and reactions, so the main focus is learning from the past in order to have new beginnings. So this could for sure be a great time to resolve any issues that you have with a sibling and in other areas it represents the possibility of deepening the relationships that you have in your immediate circle that in the past you didn't have time to give energy to, but now you see the potential and how you can enrich each other's lives. Also letting go of any relationships that you have outgrown or that you know just bring you down. So the four week period of Gemini season is a good one for you Aries, filled with much activity, opportunities for love, and opportunities for deepening your friendships, relationships, and just overall connection with people, all while moving forward with achieving your goals, which will put you in a great flow when cancer season rolls around on June 20th. Okay, Taurus, when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th, this will take place in your second house. So for you, Taurus, this is an excellent time for getting your financial life in a good place. Your focus will be security, and if you don't have confidence in where you are when it comes to work and your future in that area, this will be the four-week period to really figure out what your game plan is. If you are unhappy at your job, this is the time to make an exit plan. Make sure that if you want to get out of your work situation, that you take the time to look for a different job first. First. You don't want to find yourself quitting one job and not having work. This may feel good in the moment, but over time it will just bring you more stress and uncertainty. You for sure will be able to make big moves, just do so in a practical step-by-step -step process, Taurus. Don't make any emotional decisions. You will also have the urge to make some big purchases during this time, but resist that urge. Investing is great, but pleasure purchases, leave those off the table during the four week period of Gemini season. So the overall theme is getting very clear on what it is you're doing for a living or intend on doing for a living and get that game plan clear for yourself so you have the certainty and clarity moving forward. Now when it comes to love, Venus shifts into Cancer on June 2nd, which will be taking place in your third house. So if you're single, there could for sure be some potential for a love connection. The third house is the house of duality, so you may find that it isn't just one person that you're connecting with, but two possible love interests, which means that this four week period of Gemini season and Venus shifting into Cancer could for sure involve you having to decide between the two potential options of love and finalizing that decision. You could meet these potential love interest on a short trip it could be a neighbor you could you could meet them online more than likely they will do some sort of work in communications or working with young people or kids the good news is that the potential for a love connection will be present so make sure that if a relationship is what you want that you put your energy towards that area of your life if you're already in a relationship this is a great time to take a little vacation together and resolve any issues that may be lingering you two could have a much smoother time getting to the bottom of an issue during this period. So when it comes to love, Taurus, it's looking pretty good. Now the new moon solar eclipse comes around on June 10th. This will also be in your second house. A solar eclipse brings to light consequences of past actions and reactions. So the main focus is learning from the past in order to have new beginnings. And because this is in your second house, it's all about finances and work. So this further amplifies that this is the perfect time for you to get very clear on where you are right now in your life and what it is you want to do in terms of how you want to make your money and what it is you want to do with the money once you make it. Again, this is a great time for investing, but not for pleasure spending. So if you're going to spend some money during this time, make it on something that you know will make you money in the future. So overall, Taurus, this four week period of Gemini season is the perfect time for dealing with your money, your professional work life, and possibly finding the potential for love. So this can be a very inspiring time. Just stay focused on taking your time when it comes to making decisions and and make sure that the decisions that you do make are practical, not emotional. So happy Gemini season, Taurus. It's gonna be a good one. Okay, Geminis, it's finally here, your season. So I wanna wish you all laughs, good times, inspired ideas, endless abundance, happiness, and so, so much love. So happy birthday, Geminis. Enjoy it, you definitely deserve it. Now when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th, this is gonna take place in your first house, which is the most powerful sun transit of the year for you, Gemini. This is your rebirth time. Everyone loves a makeover, and this is your opportunity to get a fresh start in every area of your life. So take this opportunity and make the most of it. This is definitely the time of year that you are meant to be the focus, and not in a selfish way where you don't care what happens to other people because all you care about are your desires. No, it's not that, but it is the time of year where you're meant to be honest with yourself and say, okay, 
During tourist season in my 12th house, I was given the opportunity to honestly look at myself and my life situation in order to identify the areas of my life that I want to change. Well, now Gemini season is here and you have the opportunity to make those changes. So plant those new seeds of intention so you can really see things start to transform in your life. This is a time where you can decide to change your vibe up, how you present yourself to the world. Your magnetism and manifesting powers will be in high gear. So know that whatever you focus on is exactly what you're gonna attract. So if you want money, focus on abundance and that flow will be much more likely to come your way. If you want success, same deal. If you've been looking to change careers or put more energy into making your dream job a reality, now is the time to start putting those intentions into motion. Now, if you have been desiring love, not only will the sun be in your first house, but Venus goes into Cancer on June 2nd, which will be in your second house. So it's very possible during this time that you could meet someone, Gemini, but the special someone will be attractive to you because of the stability that they represent. Meaning if you're usually attracted to someone with a bit of a wild side, your attraction may be a little different this time around. Because of Venus transiting your second house, this person could have something to do with the world of money, like they may work at a bank or some financial institution. The important thing is that during your birthday season, the energy of a new relationship has a strong likelihood of manifesting for you, if that's something that you want. If you're already in a relationship, the second house Venus transit could be a great time for you and your partner regarding your financial situation. So don't be surprised if some unexpected money comes your way. Now on June 10th, the new moon solar eclipse takes place and this will also be in your first house, which is an amazing opportunity, Gemini's, because this truly means a reinvention for you. It means this is the time that you can truly start new and make some major lasting changes. Try and spend as little time as possible reminiscing on the good old days <laughs> or talking about the past. Yes, you may have some great memories, but now is not the time for walking down memory lane. This time in your life is all about doing things differently and starting something new, really bringing a new energy, the energy of the new you to everything that you do during this time. Overall, this Gemini season is a time for excitement, major manifesting, and leaving all things old that no longer serve you right where they belong in the past. So live it up, Geminis. This is your season, and again, happy, happy, happy birthday. Okay, Cancers, now when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th, this will take place in your 12th house. So Cancers, this is a very important four week period for you when it comes to life in general, because this is the preparation time for your season, Cancer season. So what this means is, yes, continue on the path of working to achieve your goals, and for sure stay consistent with taking the actions that you know support your vision. But this is absolutely not the time to push too hard or to get caught up in frustration. It's a time to look inward and be honest with yourself about your life situation and identify any areas of your life that you want to see change. Not at all to be hard on yourself, but to make sure that you are clear on any changes that you want to see so that way you can make sure and begin to implement those changes in order to make the most of your season, cancer season, which is all about reinvention and stepping out as the new you. So if you were a butterfly, this four week season would be the cocoon phase. It's about focusing your energy on exactly what matters you. Anything that you need to face and move on from, this four week period of Gemini is the time to process it and let it go. Any former relationships, painful experiences, etc. This doesn't mean you have to shut anyone out of your life for good, unless it's necessary of course, but what it does mean is just saying to yourself, okay, what was the lesson in that experience? And then taking that lesson with you moving forward, but letting go of any confusion, regret, sadness, or any other negative emotional connection you may have to that experience because you wanna step into your season with a lightness and a space that you've made from letting things go. Now, when it comes to love, Venus will be shifting into Cancer on June 2nd, so it's finally your time for love, Cancers. And it's gonna be great because you will for sure be feeling like you have a relationship with yourself and a love for yourself that you haven't experienced in this way for a very long time. So if a romantic relationship shows up and it's one that you want, then starting on June 2nd and moving forward, the energy for love will be very strong for you so there's a high likelihood that you may meet someone new that piques your interest if you're in a place where you're thinking you know what life is good right now and I'm not really wanting to confuse my life with a the relationship then that's great too because then you can focus even more on deepening the relationship that you have with yourself which is perfect timing right now as you prepare for cancer season but be ready for a lot of romantic energy to be coming your way because when Venus shifts into cancer your magnetism and attractiveness will be in high gear so again, if a relationship is what you want, 
be ready because now could very well be the time. But if you want to stay single for a while, then just know you'll be breaking a lot of hearts in the process. Now the new moon solar eclipse comes around on June 10th and this will also be in your 12th house. Now just remember a solar eclipse brings a light to consequences of past actions and reactions. So the main focus is learning from the past in order to have new beginnings. And because this is in your 12th house, this will be a very intense time. If you have any secrets, because if you aren't careful, they could definitely be revealed during this time. So maybe this is a time where you're thinking, you know what? I wanna come clean with anything I've been hiding. Either way, you wanna use this new moon solar eclipse energy to deal with whatever healing and releasing that you need to, so this way you can be in a strong, confident, lighthearted space by the time your season, cancer season, rolls around. So Gemini season, cancers, it's a time for introspection, healing, new love, and transformation. So happy Gemini season. Okay, Leos. So when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th, this for you will be taking place in your 11th house. So this is going to be a very exciting four week period for you Leos. This is one of my favorite transits because it's the house of dreams coming true. You'll be feeling super social during this time, but not at all in a needy way, just in a way where you're excited by the idea of low drama and so much fun. So you will for sure be wanting to get out and just have a good time, deepening the relationships that you already have and maybe creating some new friendships and connections. You will absolutely start to gain even more clarity when it comes to your life and what you want. Your manifesting powers will be strong, so remember, whatever you focus on is exactly what you will be bringing your way. Don't hold back when it comes to taking risks during this time because the moment you decide to do something new, you will get inspiration in terms of the best way to make it work for you. Now when it comes to love, Venus will be shifting it into Cancer on June 2nd, and for you this will be taking place in your 12th house. So this is not really the time for romantic love and not because you won't be able to attract it. It's more about the fact that once Venus shifts into Cancer, you may just not be that inspired by the idea of a relationship. You'll be focused much more on having a good time and connecting with friends. Now, if you're already in a relationship, you will be feeling much more like spending time away from the public eye. It's interesting. In your personal world, you'll be feeling like busting out and having the time of your life. But when it comes to your romantic relationship, you'll be feeling more inclined to have quiet time at home with your partner. Either way, this is a balanced time for you where you're meant to enjoy yourself and not stress yourself out with trying to up your game or by trying to overcome personal hardships. It's really about staying in the flow and reminding yourself that you are co-creating with the universe and much of the time, the only job you have is identifying what you want and going in that direction with excitement, conviction, and certainty and allowing the universe to do the rest. Now the new moon solar eclipse comes around on June 10th and this will also be in your 11th house. So just remember, a solar eclipse brings to light consequences of past actions and reactions. So the main focus is learning from the past in order to have new beginnings. And because this is in your 11th house, this means that you could have a long awaited breakthrough with one of your close friends where you finally feel the ability to be honest with them about a sensitive subject that you may have been avoiding for a while. It's the perfect time for healing that relationship and starting fresh from a place of transparency and trust and necessary boundaries that keep the relationship strong and that keep the relationship healthy and enjoyable. So overall, Leo's, the four week period of Gemini season is going to be a fun time with some emotional breakthroughs, dreams coming true, not so much the time for romantic love, sorry about that if that's what you were looking for, <laughs> but the perfect time to cultivate the energy around love so you feel confident and strong moving forward, which will keep you in that strong flow of manifesting and happiness as we approach cancer season. So happy Gemini season, Leos. Okay, Virgos, so when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th, for you Virgos, this will be taking place in your 10th house. This is great news, Virgos, because I know as earth signs, you always see it as good news when your professional and financial world gets a boost, and now is that time. If you've been taking all the steps regarding your work and career, consistently putting in the effort and staying focused, this four week period of Gemini season is gonna be a time where you will finally start to reap some really great rewards for all the energy and all the work you've been putting into making your dreams come true. You will be getting more recognition and the channels of money and finances will be opening up for a stronger level of abundance to come your way. The only issue is if you've been avoiding doing the work to achieve your goals, you may for sure experience the consequences of your lack of action even stronger during this time. But if you've been doing the work, which as a Virgo you probably have, then this is a fantastic four week period for work and money Virgos. Now when it comes to love, Venus will be shifting into Cancer on June 2nd, which be in your 11th house Virgos. So for you, this means that love can for sure be coming your way and most likely will 
it'll be by way of a friend. Meaning, more than likely, it'll be a friend that hooks you up with this new love interest, and it will start slow where you two will have a friendship first that will slowly but surely develop into something more romantic and substantial. Or even if your friend isn't the one who introduces you, it could actually be a case where you start to see one of your friends in a way that you've never seen them before, and love could start to develop from that place. Either way, it's looking promising for you Virgos out there when it comes to love. Now, if you're already in a relationship, this means that once Venus shifts into Cancer, this is a great time for you and your partner to get out and be more social. Do things with your friends and their friends, and maybe begin blending those worlds a bit more so there's an even stronger dynamic and depth to your relationship. Now, the new moon solar eclipse comes around on June 10th and this will also be in your 10th house. Now just remember a solar eclipse brings to light consequences of past actions and reactions so the main focus is learning from the past in order to have new beginnings. And because this is in your 10th house this further amplifies your opportunity coming up for career advancement and strengthening that part of your life path. Just make sure that you've learned from your past mistakes in this area and that you're doing things differently regarding any changes necessary based on those mistakes that you may have made in the past. So overall, Virgos, this four-week period of Gemini season is a great time for career, money, and love. So do it, do it big, and have fun in the process. Happy Gemini season, Virgos. Okay, Libras, now when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th, this will be in your ninth house. So for you, Libras, this four-week period of Gemini season is going to be all about expanding your world. You will have the urge for freedom and excitement, so embrace that urge. Good luck will be on your side, so this is a great time for taking risks because this could indicate a very favorable outcome. This is also an excellent time for learning something new, so if there's a new skill or a course that you've been thinking about taking, now's the time to dive in and make that happen. More than any other time of year, you will be looking for deeper meaning and excitement, so your only job is to make sure that you get out and allow the universe to do the rest. If you have been thinking about taking a short vacation, this is a great time to do so. Really, any idea that you have that promises fun, excitement, and new adventures is for sure in your best interest during this time, Libras. This is a good transit for finances, so you should have a good flow in that area as well. Now, when it comes to love, Venus will be shifting into Cancer on June 2nd, which will be taking place in your 10th house. So what this means for you, Libra, is romantic connection could be coming your way with someone who is older than you, someone who is stable, has a good standing in their career, and who has a good relationship with the financial world. That type of person could be coming your way. More than likely, this person will manifest in some way connected to your work or professional world. So you will either meet them on the job or someone from your job may introduce you. But the energy is strong around this potential love being connected to your world of employment and public standing. Now, if you are already in a relationship, this could be a good time to work together with your partner on some sort of a project because it can for sure yield some great financial success. This could mean investing together or just having them help you out when it comes to having to complete some task that is involved with your job. But overall, this is a good energy transit for you when it comes to love, Libras. Now, the new moon solar eclipse comes around on June 10th. This will also be in your ninth house. And just remember, a solar eclipse brings to light consequences of past actions and reactions. So the main focus is learning from the past in order to have new beginnings. And because this is in your ninth house, it signifies a strong transformation and expansion to the way that you see your life and the world. The status quo will no longer be satisfying to you, Libra, so use this energy as motivation to try something new and follow your desires to see where they may lead you. If in the past you have had ideas that you talked yourself out of, as Libras sometimes do, well now is the time to talk yourself right back into them. The four weeks of Gemini season are meant to be big fun for you, Libra, where you have some new experiences, possibly some new love energy coming your way when it comes to Venus shifting into Cancer, and overall, just a time of transformation. So live it up and happy Gemini season. Okay, Scorpios, now when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th, this will take place in your eighth house. So Scorpios, you are right at home in this transit because Scorpio rules the eighth house. So during this four week period of Scorpio, you will be feeling emotional and you will find yourself having the urge for transformation, for self mastery. You know as a Scorpio, when you set your mind to something, there is no one that can be as focused and as powerful as you can. So this four week period of Gemini season isn't about setting career goals or making tons of money. And don't get me wrong, this is actually a good transit for money, so you should be seeing a bit of a boost in that area. But the bigger energetic shift will be in you identifying
identifying some area of your life where you feel like things are out of balance and this is the time for you to be addressing that issue. Whatever behavior you know that you have where you can go to extremes, this four week period is a time to overcome that tendency and create a healthier balance for yourself. It's all about ridding yourself of bad habits so this way you can continue the rest of your year working at your optimum capacity. Now, when it comes to love, on June 2nd, Venus will be shifting into Cancer, which will be in your ninth house, which is a great energy for you and the possibilities around love, Scorpio. The interesting thing is that whoever you attract during this time, that has the potential to be in your romantic life will more than likely be from a different cultural background than you. They will bring excitement to your life that you haven't experienced in a while and bring freedom of thought and new ideas and just an overall departure from what you're used to, which can be really exciting. Now, if you're already in a relationship, this Venus transit through the ninth house sets up the perfect time for you and your partner to take a trip. It's a good time to shake things up. Otherwise, you could become bored and frustrated with the relationship. So, love is looking good for you during Gemini season, Scorpios. Now the new moon solar eclipse comes around on June 10th, and this will also be in your eighth house. And just remember, a solar eclipse brings to light consequences of past actions and reactions, so the main focus is learning from the past in order to have new beginnings. And because this is in your eighth house, this will further amplify any behaviors, thought patterns, or relationships that you've had in your life that you know bring you down, Scorpios, and this eighth house eclipse is bringing you the opportunity to overcome whatever this may be for you and to genuinely get a new start. Remember, if you wanna experience something you've never experienced before, you have to approach life from a new perspective. And in order to do so, it may be necessary to release something old because it no longer serves you. So this four week period of Gemini season, Scorpio, promises the opportunity for deep emotional connection with who you truly are and what you've been through as a person and an opportunity for transformation to the next phase of your life, overcoming any behaviors that are not in your soul's best interest, all while bringing the opportunity for love when Venus shifts into Cancer. So happy Gemini season, Scorpio. Okay, Sagittarius. Now remember Sagittarius, whenever we're in the season of our polar opposite, this diminishes your Sagittarius energy. So because Gemini is in the opposite sign of Sagittarius, you may be feeling a bit off balance for the next four weeks. For example, if you're a Sagittarius with Pisces moon and Virgo rising, then during the four weeks of Gemini season, you will be operating much more from your Pisces moon and your Virgo rising. So make sure that you have your go-to activities that you know help you to stay balanced. More than anything else, this should involve some form of working out. With Sagittarius and your big Three, it's so important for that fiery energy of yours to stay burning strong. And it's so important to have some form of physical activity to feed that part of your energetic disposition. So throughout this four week period of Gemini season, if you stay consistent with some sort of workout schedule, you will be feeling much more like yourself than if you don't do that. Now, with that being said, when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th, this will take place in your seventh house, which is the house of relationships, Sagittarius. So during this time, it is important to know that you will work much better with a partner and you'll just feel better overall when you're not going about navigating life alone. This will also help you to realize your own potential if you do so in a partnership. Now, this doesn't have to be a romantic partner. It could be a friend, it could be a family member, a co-worker. It's just that the energetic theme for you during this Gemini season is balance and making sure that you don't feel like you have to go at things alone. Now, when it comes to romantic love, Venus will be shifting into Cancer on June 2nd, which will be in your eighth house. So this for you, Sagittarius, means that if you're looking for a relationship, you will not at all be satisfied unless that someone you meet seems to have depth and the potential to really commit and have a long-term relationship. Now, usually as a Sagittarius, you are good with just having a good time and seeing where it goes. But during this Gemini season and this Venus in Cancer transit through your eighth house, you will be desiring something much more substantial. If you do by chance meet someone, they may have something to do with working in the field of psychology or research, so keep your eyes open for that sort of energy. If you're already in a relationship, this is a time where you will want to dig deeper and strengthen the connection, and if there's anything you haven't trusted about that relationship or felt unsettled about, this is the time that it will come to a head so you two can deal with it once and for all. Now, the new moon solar eclipse comes around on June 10th, and this will also be in your seventh house. Now, just remember, a solar eclipse brings to light the consequences of past actions and reactions so the main focus is learning from the past in order to have new beginnings and because this is in your seventh house this solar eclipse will bring to light any mistakes that you tend to 
to consistently make when it comes to relationships. And this is just in order to give you the opportunity to identify these habits and resolve them once and for all so you can start new with a clean slate and a different perspective in this area. So embrace the Sagittarius. It's a great opportunity for new beginnings when it comes to love and relationships. So Gemini season is a great opportunity for you to really make some major transformation in your world of love and relationships. So embrace it and enjoy the process, Sagittarius. Happy Gemini season. Okay, Capricorns. Now when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th, for you Capricorns, this will be taking place in your sixth house. So this four week period of Gemini season is gonna be focused on your health and setting short term goals for yourself. So Capricorns, I know we usually think big picture and what it is we want to accomplish with our lives, but this is the perfect opportunity for you to say to yourself, okay, let me give myself a four week goal. The start of this goal will be on May 20th, and I want to make sure that I achieve this goal by June 20th when cancer season rolls around. Now, if you're watching this video and it's already past May 20th, don't worry, start wherever you are and just make the ending date for you to achieve your goal June 20th. Now, it will be even more powerful if your goal involves health and wellness since this transit is in your sixth house or a small short-term goal regarding your professional world and career. If you approach this four-week period from this perspective, you'll be using the energy of Gemini season in the exact way it's intended to be used by that Capricorn energy of yours. So that's the overall theme for you Capricorns, but when it comes to love, Venus will be shifting into Cancer on June 2nd, which is in your seventh house. So this is the absolute best transit for you when it comes to manifesting a romantic relationship. So if you've been wanting a relationship, then the energy is very strong and the probability very high for you to manifest love during this time. Now this potential love will most likely come from someone that a friend introduces you to or you will meet them when you are out with friends, but there is for sure that connection to this potential love interest and when it comes to their profession, the odds are strong that they will work in some way in the world of the arts or law, so keep your eyes and heart open for that sort of energy. So this Gemini season could be the beginning of a new romance for you Capricorn, especially once Venus shifts into Cancer on June 2nd. Now the new moon solar eclipse comes around on June 10th, and this will also be in your sixth house. Now just remember, a solar eclipse brings to light consequences of past actions and reactions, so the main focus is learning from the past in order to have new beginnings. And because this is in your sixth house, don't be surprised if there is an unhealthy habit that you have, whether it be with eating the foods that you know aren't so great for you, or overindulging in alcohol, or not getting to the gym enough, etc., don't be surprised if some sort of circumstance shows up that is urging you to pay closer attention to that part of your life that's out of balance. So instead of waiting for the message from the universe or for something to seriously go wrong with your health, instead of that, jump right into getting yourself engaged in a routine or system that is upping your game when it comes to loving yourself enough, Capricorns, to really start taking care of yourself when it comes to your physical, spiritual, and mental well-being. This is a great time to pull it together health-wise because you wanna be healthy and feeling great when you manifest this new love of yours. Enjoy this Gemini season, Capricorns. It's gonna be a good one, putting us in a great flow for when cancer season comes around. So, happy Gemini season. Okay, Aquarius. Now when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th, for you Aquarius, this will be taking place in your fifth house. So the theme for this four week period of Gemini season for you Aquarius is fun, fun, and more fun. It's your job. Yes, you owe it to yourself to get out, engage in your favorite hobbies, hang out with friends, go to parties. Even if you're not feeling that social, you will be glad that you did do these things because engaging in these types of activities is gonna be exactly what the doctor ordered in terms of elevating your vibration and upping your manifesting power as a result. Taurus season was a nesting phase for you Aquarians out there, so now is the time to leave that nest and spread your wings and take flight and enjoy the ride and all of the opportunities that come right along with it. Positive energy will be supporting your goals and your ability to optimize the relationships and connections that you have in your life and leverage them into forward movement for yourself and your goals. And not in the way where you're being an opportunist or using anyone, not that at all. And that for sure is not the way that you're wired anyway. I'm just saying make sure that you pay attention to the fact that there are people that will play a role in your life where they will be helpful in moving you forward when it comes to your goals and aspirations. Now when it comes to love, Venus is shifting into Cancer on June 2nd, and this will be in your sixth house. So if you meet someone that could possibly be a romantic connection during this time, it could for sure have something to do with what you do for a living. Maybe you'll meet them at work or someone from work will introduce you to this potential love, but you wanna for sure be careful that you take your time 
getting into anything serious because you know if you hook up with someone at work and it doesn't work out, then you will have to see them at work. So take your time and don't rush into anything, but just know when it comes to love, work will play some major role in this possible connection that you can make during this time. Now the new moon solar eclipse comes around on June 10th and this will also be in your fifth house. And just remember a solar eclipse brings to light consequences of past actions and reactions. So the main focus is learning from the past in order to have new beginnings. And because this is in your fifth house, this could really be connecting you to the idea that when you allow yourself to be social and have fun that's when your opportunities really come your way I know as an Aquarius you can be a loner at times and even have waves of feeling antisocial but just make sure you're balancing your alone time with time out among people and sharing your light and good energy with the world the fifth house transit for this solar eclipse could also add to the possibility of you finding love so get out like I said and have fun keep your mind eyes and heart open and just see where that energy takes you because this four weeks of Gemini season for for sure is gonna be a good one Aquarius. So happy Gemini season. Okay Pisces, so when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 20th, this will be in your fourth house. So this means that this four week period of Gemini season for you Pisces is gonna be a nesting phase. This is the time of year where you're meant to give energy to your home and family. So first, regarding your home, you wanna make sure that you take the time to ask yourself if your home is a place where you feel safe and secure, where you feel that it's the perfect space to recharge. If not, this is the perfect four week period to do some redecorating, maybe even consider moving if that's something that you've been really wanting to do for a while. This could also apply to your spiritual home, being a time to do some inner work if you have feelings of restlessness or uncertainty about things. Now when it comes to family, this could be a great time to resolve any ongoing drama that you may have with a family member. Just remember that Mercury does go into retrograde on May 29th, so if you have any conversations during the retrograde phase, it will be really important to make sure to take your time, to not be reactive, and to make sure that you're both being compassionate, considerate, and not jumping to any conclusions. Now when it comes to love, Venus shifts into Cancer on June 2nd, which will take place in your fifth house. So this is actually a fantastic time for you Pisces when it comes to love and the possibility of manifesting a romantic connection. The fifth house sets up the energy of you being the one who is being chased as opposed to you doing the chasing. So this could for sure be an exciting opportunity to meet that special someone and see where it goes. The fifth house also has a strong energy around having a good time, and it also brings a boost to your confidence. So your magnetic powers will be in high gear. So although Gemini season is a nesting phase for you, it doesn't mean that you have to stay home. It just means that you want to make sure and tend to any issues regarding home and family, but for sure, make sure that if a relationship is what you want, that you also put energy into putting yourself into the circumstances where you might meet someone. If you're already in a relationship, this fifth house transit of Venus is the perfect time to make sure you are balancing your relationship with fun as well as responsibility. Many times when we're in a long-term relationship, it's really easy to get into a routine and find yourselves forgetting to spice it up and have a good time. So during this Venus Cancer transit, it will be the perfect time to do something new that you two have never done because it will for sure help deepen the connection. Now the new moon solar eclipse comes around on June 10th and this will also be in your fourth house. And just remember, a solar eclipse brings to light consequences of past actions and reactions. So the main focus is learning from the past in order to have new beginnings. And because this is in your fourth house, it will be really, really important to spend time with family and to make sure that connection and resolution is the theme. Also making sure to tend to any areas that you're unhappy with when it comes to your actual physical and spiritual home. So Gemini season for you Pisces is a nesting phase with great prospects when it comes to love. So use this energy to strengthen your foundation and possibly make a significant love connection. This way you will be in a good flow and in a good space physically, spiritually, and emotionally by the time cancer season rolls around. So happy Gemini season, Pisces. Okay, so there you have it. What to expect for each sign during Gemini season. Remember, it's all about adapting and using your creativity to continue on your path to fulfillment. So let's stay focused on making the choices that lead to the actions that support your goals for 2021. So stay strong, stay healthy, and stay optimistic. I hope you all enjoyed the information. If you did, please hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks so much for taking the time to come and hang out with me. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video.